Hello again, and welcome to another uh, digital pathology slide review sign out session. Uh, I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our program, as always, is a uh, product of the uh, Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a collaboration with the Digital Pathology Association and PATH presenter. Our case today uh, comes from, uh, again, the files at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center, which uh, provides for my time. Um, and is uh, that of a 79-year-old uh, woman with postmenopausal bleeding. Uh, of note, this is an elderly woman. She's in a risk category uh, by virtue of that age uh, where we start thinking about uh, uh, certain types of endometrial uh, pathology uh, that are distinctive and more prevalent in that uh, area. So she had a biopsy that led uh, subsequently to uh, resection. Um, here we see a sample of a section from her uterus. Uh, she has a fibroid tumor here on one side and that's distorting an altered endometrial cavity which has a very thickened uh, endometrial uh, tissue uh, which is apparently invading into the myometrium. And we notice also right here in the subserosa uh, a little hall hallmark. So let's just take a look and start from the, the surfaces of the ovary and start, or excuse me, of the uh, endometrium and see what we have here. So here's uh, maybe what is closest to normal uh, for her, but we see that this is really not a normal atrophic endometrium as you would expect in a 79, almost 80 year old. Uh, this looks like a high grade uh, malignancy uh, we have these nice uh, hobnail cells uh, that uh, we see here, a pale cytoplasm, and certainly very high-grade uh, nuclei in this area, uh, maybe some giant cells as well. Uh, so this uh, looks as though we would think with this papillary projection, these high nuclear grades, we might think about uh, uterine papillary serous carcinoma. Uh, here we see also a very nice uh, uh, atypical mitotic figure right here. Um, and so that becomes a concern uh, that this is uh, certainly a high grade uh, neoplasm. Looking a little further, uh, again, we see this papillary architecture suggesting serous type differentiation. But then as we come over here, uh, while there's still some papillary structures to this and a, an apparent serous component, uh, to this, we also see that this patient has uh, a more well-defined area here with a very long branching delicate uh, type structures uh, with um, a predominance of uh, sort of clear cells here. As you can see, very sharp nuclear or cytoplasmic boundaries. We see um, a delicate uh, fibrovascular cores. Uh, Again, slightly lower grade nuclei than those other areas, although again, we still have a typical mitotic figures in some areas, um, but a slightly different morphology than what we were seeing uh, there as we first launched into uh, looking at that. So we've got areas like this and areas like this that look more like serous and areas that look more like clear cell. Uh, now these are both uh, high grade endometrial uh, carcinomas um, and certainly uh, can be seen together uh, on occasion. Uh, it would be useful in a position, a situation like this to see if the entire tumor is P53 mutated. Uh, and in that case, we would probably term it strictly as uh, serous carcinoma with areas of uh, clear cell morphology. Uh, but if we have a dimorphic uh, pattern of P53 mutation, in other words, if we have some areas where p53 is mutated and others where it is not uh, then this would fall into the category of a mixed uh, neoplasm with uh, both clear cell and uh, uh, serous uh, morphologies here again we see another area that uh, has the morphologic appearance of uh, serous carcinoma with these very high grade nuclei very pleomorphic and very tiny micropapillae, even a few uh, maybe uh, thamomatous type bodies, and not the sharp uh, cytoplasmic boundaries, uh, clear cytoplasm, 
that we usually associate with clear cell carcinoma. Now, it is true that some clear cell carcinomas can have uh, eosinophilic uh, cytoplasm, and so that doesn't totally exclude clear cell carcinoma, but uh, it uh, certainly is less common than the clear cell uh, variety. Now, let's look up here also at this uh, subserosal nodule. Um, since uh, serous carcinoma may be a little bit more high grade type lesion, uh, we might wonder about that. But here we see um, that the cytoplasm, again, is fairly uh, cleared out. This is a little bit more like the clear cell tumors, uh, although, again, it could go either way. We see some cytoplasmic vacuolization um, and some hobnail cells that would be uh, fairly characteristic of clear cell carcinoma. Uh, our immunoprofile, again, for an area like this uh, could be helpful uh, in defining it. Now, this patient also had the ovary removed, and in fact, in the ovaries as well, uh, we noted there was a presence of uh, neoplasm. Uh, in this case, uh, we see, again, a very fine papillary pattern uh, with, again, these prominent hobnail type cells. Uh, a little bit more characteristic of uh, clear cell, uh, given the cytoplasmic vacuolization and so forth, uh, but uh, a lot of overlap between these uh, particular uh, tumors. Uh, so let's just uh, take a look and think about what are the high-grade endometrial carcinomas that we need to be concerned about. Well, certainly, uh, typical endometrial adenocarcinoma can uh, present as a grade three tumor, uh, greater than 50% solid growth. Uh, we've presented earlier some cases of uh, carcinosarcoma, which is also a very high-grade uh, endometrial carcinoma. And then clear cell carcinoma is, by definition, a high-grade tumor, as is uterine papillary serous carcinoma. Uh, two other tumors that we've made mention of in prior cases include undifferentiated carcinoma and dedifferentiated carcinoma, the latter usually presenting in conjunction with a lower grade typical endometrial uh, carcinoma. Now, mixed carcinomas typically occur, or can occur uh, in this situation, although typically they are composed of uh, two distinct types. One, a higher grade tumor, a clear cell or papillary serous tumor, and one, a lower grade endometrial adenocarcinoma, typical endometrial adenocarcinoma. When we have two high grade morphologies, um, that also is a rare occurrence. Uh, but uh, is described, uh, and uh, so we need to be aware of that um, uh, possibility as well. Speaking specifically about clear cell carcinoma, uh, these are usually postmenopausal patients, but then so are serous uh, tumors and carcinosarcomas. These are rarely lint-related, but there are several other molecular subtypes that can be seen, uh, including the P53 mutated form, uh, which may overlap with serous carcinoma. There can be uh, uh, mismatch repair uh, defects, uh, as well as the uh, DNA polymerase epsilon mutants uh, that uh, may uh, have an uh, uncharacteristically good prognosis. And then molecularly, we can have just a variety of no special type uh, tumors that have this morphology. It's very helpful to use immunohistochemistry, specifically uh, napsin A. Uh, to identify this uh, clear cell morphology, although that can be somewhat patchy in these uh, tumors. Other markers, HNF1B, Amacar, CK7, Pax8 also are typically positive, but these are usually hormone receptor negative uh, and CD10 negative, so excluding uh, renal uh, type tumors or other more typical endometrial tumors. And as I mentioned, they may be mixed with endometrial serous or other types. Now, I thought I'd just show you a fairly typical uh, uterine papillary serous tumor. Uh, this, uh, a tumor that was arising in a polyp. So here we see a fragment of endometrium, a very atrophic uh, endometrium and myometrium, and then we have this polyp. But notice that here on the surface of this polyp, we have some blue tissue. And this is our area of interest. This is a not uncommon presentation of uh, uterine papillary serous uh, carcinoma. And as we can see here, uh, this is a very uh, filigreed uh, papillary proliferation with uh, quite high-grade nuclei. Uh, looking around here a little bit, um, we can see, again, these very dark hyperchromatic nuclei 
micropapillary structures, and so forth. We don't see the clearing of the cytoplasm. We just see this architecture. Um, and this is a very easy tumor to miss uh, if we don't examine things thoroughly or if we get a curatage and it's mostly polyp and we don't uh, get levels. We want to make sure we don't miss this lesion and be fairly uh, um, eager to stain for p53 to detect the mutation status uh, in these circumstances. Here you can see evidence of uh, invasion into the, uh, the stroma of the stock. Um, some of the original uh, descriptions of this tumor uh, had found uh, small endometrial tumors like this, but widespread peritoneal metastases. Uh, so these don't uh, spread in the typical fashion of endometrial carcinomas in terms of myoinvasive uh, tumor. Uh, they may also spread via the tubes and via the uh, peritoneal cavity. Uh, in contrast, in the ovary, uh, here's an example of a very uh, typical clear cell carcinoma, um, again with this uh, pale cytoplasm, uh, somewhat hyaline uh, globules uh, in some areas, a little lower grade nuclei, and uh, nice uh, cytoplasmic borders, as you see here, well-defined, and some eosinophilic droplets that also can be characterized. Uh, this would not usually be mistaken with serous carcinoma. Although, uh, here we again, we see uh, some areas can have a slightly papillary uh, configuration. <clears throat> but here we get a nice view of uh, what some of these apical uh, hobnail-type nuclei can appear uh, as with, again, the clear cytoplasm that we associate with clear cell carcinoma. So uh, that's a nice uh, rundown of our case today. A final sign-out diagnosis would be clear cell carcinoma of the endometrium with admixed serous carcinoma. Uh, in this case, we had a dimorphic uh, pattern of staining with P53, and so it was uh, appropriate to call it an, an admixed rather than a uh, purely mixed or single uh, serous carcinoma and metastasis to the ovary. So hopefully that brings things into focus for you today on our case. Uh, hope that you'll continue to join us. Please subscribe. And boy, we love your comments. Appreciate your suggestions for topics to cover or for uh, ways to improve this uh, um, uh, video series. We'll look forward to seeing you again, and thanks for your for your time.